Hey guys, good morning. A little uh, smarter news coffee talk from the road. Uh, it's mid morning, so maybe you're having a mid morning coffee. I'm on my way to the doctor's, which will be the final appointment before El Baby, La Baby, <laughs> arrives. Could happen at any time. Just ran into Home Depot really fast and had two women tell me how huge I am, which, you know, always is a boost of confidence as you're heading into the final few hours before you give birth. So um, if, if the baby doesn't come sooner, then the baby will be here um, early next week. So I just wanted to uh, quickly come on, talk a little bit about the news because there's so many different things that are happening that are not getting a lot of attention. And I also wanna address something that's getting a lot of attention, but we're not covering on Smarter News right now. And that's been the controversy that started online over the weekend with the president talking about uh, different members of Congress. I'm gonna use just very generic terms to describe what's happening because I think you probably can jump on social media, see what the president said, see what the responses are, and make up your own mind about what's going on. I don't, I think American leadership is extremely important. It's a huge news story, no matter what. But I hesitate sometimes jumping in to cover the back and forth um, between different politicians when there is no actionable result. What I mean is I want Smarter News to be free of the clutter. I want you to be able to see the news clearly, what's going on that's really important to you that can affect your life. And yes, American leadership can certainly affect your life, but I also um, want to turn down the dial on some of the noise that's out there and prioritize for you, hey, if you have a couple minutes, here's what I think you really should know about. So that's part of the reason why when the president goes back and forth with different lawmakers, the lawmakers go back and forth with the president. I don't normally jump in. It's um, it's not because I don't think it's important all the time. It just means if I'm taking a step back, taking a deep breath, and if you have 30 seconds, I think, okay, what are the things that you really need to know about? So here are the things I actually think you really need to know about today. Um, one of them I'm actually ashamed I didn't know about. I was researching another story and stumbled upon uh, the death of an American soldier in Afghanistan that happened over the weekend, highly decorated uh, Green Beret that was killed. He's the 12th American soldier killed this year, so far this year. Um, and the reason why this is extremely important, not only because of the loss of life of someone that was killed in action in service to our country, uh, just recently, the United States has talked extremely positively about these peace talks that we've had with the Taliban. The Taliban have sat down with members of the Afghan government, which they said they would never do. And our representative is speaking positively about these negotiations that could potentially lead to America's withdrawal from Afghanistan. While this is happening and while the United States is speaking positively about these negotiations, the Taliban have continued their attacks over the last several weeks, including an attack that hurt many school children um, that we covered about a week ago in our quick quote sections, but also this apparent attack that killed an American soldier. So really important, America's longest war. We are always concerned about what's happening in Afghanistan because of the relationship between the Taliban and Al Qaeda. And of course, Afghanistan was used as a staging ground for the 9-11 attack. So I think this is really crucial. I also think the number of soldiers killed is, is, is crucial. Um, 12 soldiers so far this year. Here we are midway through the year. If this pace continues, it, we could be on the pace um, to outpace previous years, recent years in the war in Afghanistan. So I think that's really crucial for you. Second thing, uh, it's a really big story as well, is what's going on with Facebook and their cryptocurrency. There's a hearing that's being held today um, about that. And just some perspective. Cryptocurrency can be really um, confusing. It is to me because it's different than real money, right? It's cryptocurrency. It's money that's essentially electronic, for lack of a better term. Facebook wants to get into this business. Facebook has more than 2 billion users, which means 2 billion of the 7 billion people that are on this planet are on Facebook. And there's a lot of concern about them getting into the cryptocurrency business because of what it would do to the global markets and global economy. I'll leave it there. I just think that you should know about that. Um, lawmakers are coming out saying this isn't good. Facebook's saying, we think it's a great idea. <laughs> So I think you should know about that as well. And finally, just want to pause a little bit when it comes to immigration, because the president and the White House put out a new policy when it came to asylum seekers 
in America. One thing I want to point out that I think is really crucial is that we talk a lot about the folks coming across the U.S. southern border illegally as asylum seekers, but we still don't have the percentage for this year of how many are actually asking for asylum. And I think we need to know that statistic. So the picture in our mind is there's a lot of people asking for asylum. I don't have the numbers to tell you what exact, you know, what percentage are actually asking for asylum. We believe it to be very high. Last year, one out of four people that applied for asylum that were able to get to the courts uh, were granted asylum, so it is not easy to do. What the administration is trying to do with this new policy is essentially slow down the flow of people to the U.S. southern border because of the number of people that are there that are coming. And what they're saying is that if you want to apply for asylum in the United States, you go through a country that has a refugee policy or an asylum policy or your own your own country where you can go to the U.S. consulate, you need to register first. You can't just come to the United States and just be the, you know, and just apply for asylum. You have to attempt to do it in a country that you have come through or your own. Uh, civil liberties groups say this is not what, this is not legal. So it's going to be immediately challenged, but it's just another way that the Trump administration is trying to deter people from coming to the U.S. southern border. Border Patrol Customs and Border Protection says this is also about deterring human traffickers, you know, uh, because they they are bringing people that are then saying they're applying for asylum, but if they can't bring people that can apply for asylum, then hopefully it'll it'll disrupt their business in some way. I mean, this is sort of the theory behind it. Uh, you know, whether or not it's effective, I'm not sure, and it's going to be extremely controversial. So uh, that's something that they they just did. My husband's coming in. Look at he has a coffee. So nice. this is coffee talk. It's good. He's looking at me with his kind of angry eyes. What's happening, y'all? <laughs> I said we're going to the doctors, and the, the women at Home Depot were telling me how fat I was. You were outside when they were doing that. I, uh, I could hear it. You could hear it. They, uh, they didn't say fat. They said, uh, you're huge. <laughs> thank thank what you. The, and, and obviously, that is a reference <laughs> to being pregnant, not being fat. So, I mean, still not a polite thing to say. I'm not excusing it. Um, I don't know why... <laughs> in the world uh, you would ever look at someone and go, you're huge. It sounds like something our three-year-old would say. Um, but some people think that's okay. Guys, if we got guys uh, watching this, don't say that. And ladies, don't say that to other ladies either. It's just not, it's, it's not cool. I just would like to point out that what was really great about Leif's uh, testimony there is that it just it just proves that there's no fake news and smarter news. See, I gave you, I gave you what happened. And he, he verified it, an outside source. <laughs> so anyways, those are the three things I think you guys need to know today. Uh, we're going to run to the doctor. So keep you posted. I mean, if the baby comes, I'll let you know. That could be breaking news all itself. So um, have a great day, guys. And uh, I'll talk to you later. You want to say goodbye, Liz? Yes. Bye, guys.